I just finished my new Game Plus 5 run with an Intelligence Faith Caster build, and oh man, these builds are way stronger than what I was expecting. For the build, I focused primarily on the Sorcery and Incantation skills that have requirements in both Faith and Intelligence, so those being Magma Sorceries, Death Sorceries, and Golden Order Incantations. This is not only to stick to the theme, but also because these are extremely powerful abilities capable of completely melting HP bars, they are honestly just criminally underrated. So let's jump right into the build, but keep in mind that this is New Game Plus 5, so I am at a higher level than what you might be at. Hey! Alright, for the build, I changed the setup around a bit depending on which spells or incantations I am focusing on for a specific fight, so I'll cover each individually. Starting with the Magma Sorceries, this is the main setup that I use most of the time. That's because of the star of the entire build, Rykard's Rancor. I have no idea why more people don't talk about this sorcery, but it is absolutely phenomenal. Casting it will summon a few of these magma skulls that will track towards the enemy before exploding all over them. The way that you want to use this is by casting the sorcery a bunch of times when the boss gives you a proper punish window. You're not going to see any damage happening at first because the skulls take some time to travel before detonating, but after a few seconds, all of a sudden, you're going to see a complete fireworks show and the boss HP bars suddenly disappear. This works best against enemies that aren't moving around too much. More mobile enemies can move away from the skulls before they detonate, but as long as the enemy isn't constantly moving around, Rykard's Rancor will completely wreck them. Now there are also other magma sorceries. They don't see as much use as Rykard's Rancor, but they are still useful in their own rights. Royal and Magma is unique as you can aim it at the ground and it will tick for a few seconds before detonating. You can have about three of them out at the same time. It does really good damage when it detonates, so if you know an enemy is going to move to a specific spot at a specific time, you can set this up for a ton of damage. However, most of the time I would have gotten better results just using Rykard's Rancor instead of this, since the damage is delayed anyway. But you can also hit the enemy directly with Royal Link Magma, and it will damage them immediately. Damage will be lower than detonating it, but it is still good damage for when you need a source of immediate damage. Magma Shot is also used as a good option for when we need to get immediate damage out. It will do around the same damage as a non-detonated Royal Ink Magma, but it also leaves a pool of lava, which, if the enemy stays in, it will do a lot more damage than Royal Ink Magma, so it's also just a good sorcery to keep in your arsenal for immediate damage. And then there's Gelmer's Fury, which I almost never use. The problem with this one is that you are locked into a long animation without any hyper armor while using it. If you can get a proper punish window to use it in, it will deal excellent damage, but the opportunities to do it feel almost non-existent and would have just gotten better results casting something else. Now for the gear on this setup, we cast with the Prince of Death Staff, because at high amounts of intelligence and faith, the scaling is incredible and at a certain point, it's actually the highest scaling staff in the entire game. So we will cast with Prince of Death while off-handing the Mount Gelmer Staff for a 15% buff to the Magma Sorceries. Even though the Gelmer Staff also scales with both Faith and Intelligence, you don't want to dual wield them, as the scaling on it is way lower than Prince of Death, so you get more damage casting with Prince of Death than you would by holding two Gelmer Staffs. Then we use the Golden Order Seal to cast our Incantation buffs. We also have the Sword of Night and Flame equipped as our weapon option. The sorceries do cover enough ground on their own, but Sword of Night and Flame is still really nice to have for situations where you wouldn't get much chances to use the sorceries. Now for the talismans, use the Dread Talisman as it's a 15% increase to all magma damage, Fire Scarpurian Charm, Gravian Mass Talisman, then either a Defensive Talisman of choice or the Two-Headed Turtle Talisman. If you are going to be using Magma Shot or Royal Link Magma a lot, you can also use Godfrey Icon, as those are buffed by it, but keep in mind that Rockhart's Rancor is not. For the Rondra's Physic, use Flame Shrouding Tier and the Blood Sucking Tier for 44% more damage. And then for the Incantation buffs, use Golden Vow for an Aura buff, Flame Grant Me Strength or a Damage Negation Body buff, 
and blessing of the archery to mitigate the HP drain of the blood sucking tier. And lastly, the armor reuse isn't super important, just use the best armor that you can while still look looking cool and medium rolling. The combination I'm using is Radiant Gold Mask, Fire Knight Armor, and the Solitude Greaves and Gauntlets. Alright, moving on, we have the Death Sorcery setup. And the only Death Sorcery we use is Ancient Death Ranker, because the other ones are garbage. There are new sorceries that seem like they should be Death Sorceries in the DLC, such as spe Spectral Rings of Light into Putrescent Sorceries, but for some reason those aren't actually buffed by the Prince of Death staff, so I don't care about them. But that's fine, because Ancient Death Rancor is strong enough to be all you need. This sorcery is a lot like Rikard's Rancor, but it deals magic damage instead of fire, has longer range and tracking, but less damage. But don't be fooled by that less damage, it still does great damage for what it is, but you can rack up a ton of damage with it before many bosses even get near you. We will mainly use this setup for enemies with lower magic resistance than their fire resist resistance, or if we just simply need the better tracking and range. So for the gear, just like before, we cast with Prince of Death Staff, not only because of its incredible scaling, but it's also going to be buffing Ancient Death Rancor. Thus, we also use a second one in our other hand for even more damage. Golden Order Seal again for buffs, and then Sword of Night and Flame as the weapon. Talismans use Godfrey Icon as this is chargeable, Magic Scorpion Charm, Raven Mass Talisman, the Defensive Talisman, or Green Turtle. You can also use Shard of Alexander if you know you're going to be using Sword of Night and Flame a lot. And then for the Wanderer's Physic, use the Blood Sucking Tier and Magic Tier for 44% more damage. And buffs, we use Blessing of the Archery, Golden Vow, and Hell of Shibiri, or a Damage Negation Body Buff, and also Terra, Terra Magica, as we can get a lot of Rancors off several times within the buff field for a ton of extra damage. And for the Armor, if you know you're going to be using Sword of Night and Flame's Comet Azur attack a lot, then you'll want to use the Spellblade set. This set has low defenses, but it's very lightweight, so with about 40 endurance you'll be light rolling with it. And in these high New Game Plus cycles, most bosses will two-shot you even with better armor, so the extra iframes from light rolling can actually be more valuable. But if you're not going to use Sword of Night and Flame a lot, Feel free to just use whatever armor you can medium roll with and still look cool. Now lastly we have the Golden Order setup. With the reputation holy damage has, you might not expect this to be that strong, however Golden Order incantations, specifically Triple Rings of Light, is incredibly powerful. This incantation summons 3 Destructo Disc Rings, which will fly to the enemy, then back to you like a boomerang, damaging the enemies both times. Now, you don't get extra damage by all three rings hitting compared to one, but there being three rings is still great because it gives this incantation a massive hitbox and AoE. So even agile bosses will usually still get hit by it both times. Also, you can chain cast this incantation with itself without having to go back to the startup animation, so very similar to the rankers, you will cast this several times within proper punish windows, and before you know it, the enemy's HP bar will just disappear. The Golden Order setup is excellent to use against enemies that are weak to holy, which, especially with the DLC, there's actually quite a lot of. There's Tibia Mariners, Death Birds, Skeletons, and even Ghost Flame Dragons. But even if the enemy isn't weak to holy, sometimes this setup is just better than the sorceries, thanks to that massive hitbox. Triple Rings of Light main downside is that it consumes quite a bit of FP with how many times we cast it, but we can also use Discus of Light if we need to be more FP efficient. Discus of Light is basically a lower damage, much smaller hitbox version of Triple Rings, but it costs almost no FP at all, so it's great to have in your arsenal, especially if you only have like 38 mind. And then there's Radagon's Rings of Light. The purpose of this incantation is that it's a 360 degree AoE with a massive range and great knockback, so it will do you wonders if you are surrounded by enemies, but it's strictly inferior to triple rings outside of that, so it's good to have in your arsenal, just not going to be commonly used. And for the gear, cast with Golden Order Seal because it scales with Intelligence and Faith, and is the highest scaling seal in the entire game, plus it buffs our incantations, which is why you'll also use a second one in your other hand. And then for the weapon, I'm still using Sword of Night in Flame, but you can use a Holy Damage weapon instead, 
so that it's benefiting from our buffs. For example, the Coded Sword is an excellent weapon you could use here. Talismans use Sacred Scorpion Charm, Flux Talisman, and then I also like to use the Two-Headed Turtle Talisman, as well as a Damage Negation Talisman. Wanderer's Physic, Blood Sucking and Holy Tear for 44% more damage. Incantation Buffs use Golden Bow, Blessing of the Archery, and Hell of Shibiri or a Damage Negation Body Buff. Armor, make sure you use the Radiant Gold Mask, as this buffs our incantations even farther, and then the rest is just the best you can use while still looking cool. Now before we talk about the stats, one more important thing to mention is that this build benefits tremendously from using spirit summons, as aggressive Varsis can make it a bit challenging to find a proper window to cast our spells and incantations. With a good summon, as soon as the summon pulls aggro, you can cast your abilities a bunch of times, it's basically a death sentence for most Varsis. The summon that I like to use is Dung Eater, because he is very aggressive and debuffs enemies' defense, but in these late New Game Plus cycles, Varsis can kill him pretty fast, so you may want to use a tanky or summon like Taelu the Golem Smith. And now with all of these setups covered, let's go over the stats. I have 80 points in both Faith and Intelligence to soft cap on the Prince of Death staff, 12 points in strength and dexterity to use Sword of Night in Flame, 60 vigor because it's mandatory, 60 mind so that I can cast my sorceries and incantations as a bunch of times before needing to use a blast, and 40 endurance to be able to use good looking armor and still medium roll, and also be able to use the spell blade set and light roll. If you are trying to play this build at a lower level, it's not really going to work out too well at level 150 unless you give up on the sorceries and just focus on Sword of Night in Flame and Golden Order incantations. If you were to do that, then you could go with the stat spread shown on the screen here. You can also play at a lower level than what I am at, but above 150, putting less points into Mind and Endurance. Or you could even use Godric's Great Room to save you an entire 35 levels, which goes a very long way in a build like this. But Intelligence Faith builds do benefit very well from being above level 200, so I do recommend doing this as a New Game Plus build, on a character that you are not level restricting too hard. And yeah, that covers everything. Overall, this is an extremely powerful build once you have the stats going for it. Definitely one of the strongest and most satisfying builds I have ever played. So if you liked this video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe and comment your thoughts below. Thanks and goodbye.